Hello everyone, today we're looking at the uh, Fluxgate Magnemometer, also known as the Induction Compass. Um, it's a very simple device. Some of the wiring diagrams uh, are similar to the VTA of Floyd Sweet. Um, also, Hendershot's generator was based on the Fluxgate Magnemometer, according to some articles. Um, so here's some very interesting data on the Fluxgate Magnemometer. Okay, the Fluxgate magnemometer is here. Um, I have a toroidal core, essentially it's two C cores, one this side, one this side. You would have seen this device before. I've got three coils wound on these formers. There's two formers, uh, one here and one here. Uh, one coming down this leg of the C core, one coming down this leg of the C core, each one having its own coil on it. Um, as you can see by the wiring, but it's actually by at the moment, it doesn't need to be by to actually do this. Um, and then over top of both formers I've got one extra coil wound all the way around. Uh, I've got two magnets, I've got a light to indicate that this coil does induce a current in it, um, and I'll show you some pretty interesting effects. So what we'll do first is we'll disconnect our load, we'll put the magnets on, Okay, so these are in attraction mode, so we've got a north pole coming down here, south pole, and, and essentially in attraction mode, so they're both coming in. Let's turn up our current, and let's have a look at the scope. Now you can see, there's all of a sudden nothing, and then all of a sudden on the scope, we get an indication of a waveform. Now this waveform is due to the magnets alone. For example, if I take the magnets off, one magnet off and two magnets off, we have no waveform. Put the magnets back on. And you can see straight away the waveform comes back. Very interesting. Essentially these coils cancel each other out, but in their cancellation they don't induce current. They don't induce current from the input to the output um, in their wiring situation. Now, to show you something pretty exciting, we can draw current. We can draw current off this outer coil. So you can see the light here is um, illuminated just a little bit. Um, now, to show you that it is the magnets that's doing this, again, I'll take the magnets off. And again, no change. So our light lights with the magnets on, and it doesn't light with the magnets off. Um, this is pretty interesting, this little device. There's a couple of problems with the Fluxgate magnemometer. The first problem is the saturation of the core. When the magnets go on, you can actually see the current go up. So for example, we disconnect our, our load again, our light. Now if we take the magnets off again, okay, magnets off, so you can see our current 2.3 amps. What's happening here is when we put the magnets back on, we can see the current goes up. What's happening here is the saturation of the core is drawing more current to actually reverse saturate the core. So, something else that's really interesting. Put our load back on, and if we watch our current draw, virtually no change in between loading this light, disconnecting the, the load. It's extremely interesting. Again, very simple. Um, it's driven by a um, AC sine wave, so I've got the sine wave driving an amplifier in here um, which powers the load, which essentially it's a, a flip-flop in there, so it pushes the flux to one side and then pushes the flux to the other side. Now at peak current in the coils um, there's, there's no magnetization. The magnetization happens at 
at zero current. So it's actually at the zero crossing. So as the, as the current in the coils goes up, the magnetization moves, but it's actually in between that, that sine wave that it actually draws the current and lights the light. So a total disconnection between the output coil and the input coils. Again, if we watch the amperage, virtually no change. So let's put the light back on. Now something I have noticed is sometimes the current with no load will fluctuate a little bit. So if you get close to it, something, something seems to make it fluctuate a little bit. which is quite quite interesting. If you get close to it, just moving around it seems to sometimes fluctuate it. Uh, again, if we put our current uh, load back on, the light lights, and the current stays virtually the same. There's virtually no draw. You can see that on the wave, on the scope here, it does change the waveform slightly. Um, obviously this is not tuned properly, this is probably could be done a lot better. Um, but again, this is low frequency, we're running in the frequency range of roughly about 20, 20 hertz. Um, it's a sine wave, extremely interesting device.